Georgina, thank you very much for giving us your time today. So much has changed over the past five years in the field of melanoma, and that's been largely due to your specialty, medical oncology. Can you explain to me first what medical oncology is and why it's made such a difference in treatment of melanoma? Sure. So medical oncology is the field of drugs for people with cancer. So basically a medical oncologist uses drugs to treat cancer. And we use drugs in two situations. In early cancer to prevent cancer from coming back. That's called adjuvant treatment. We also use drugs when, mel when melanoma or cancers have spread to distant sites in the body like the brain, bones, liver, lung. That's the deadly melanoma, which incorporates about 10 to 15% of patients with melanoma. So we use drugs in that situation to prolong survival and improve symptoms from the melanoma that's spread. So in the last five years, things have changed incredibly. Five years ago, if you spoke to me, a medical oncologists did not have much of a role in the treatment or management of melanoma, mainly because we did not have any drugs that worked. Now, we have drugs that have improved things incredibly. So the one year overall survival used to be only about 25%. Now we can say that most patients, in fact 75% of patients, are alive and well at one year. So we've done incredibly well to go from 25 to 75%, which is unheard of for any cancer that has spread to distant parts of the body, except for a few. And that's because we have things that work. Together with your colleagues at Westmead, you spearheaded the investigation into BRAF activity in the brain which was a landmark discovery. Can you tell us why? Patients where melanoma has spread to the brain, the majority of them would survive, uh, only five years ago, would survive maybe 16 to 25 weeks. Incredibly poor prognosis. Nothing had worked and what we discovered were that the BRAF inhibitors, one of the first drugs to really impact survival in melanoma that's spread everywhere, worked in melanoma in the brain. We saw these incredible shrinkages. And we said, you know what? We've seen this hint of activity. We would really like to do a trial right now. In the middle of doing this first in humans trial, we want to include a cohort with melanoma in the brain, a cohort of patients. That was unheard of. That would not have happened at any other site. It was because we were at the forefront of working with these drugs. We knew melanoma. We were doing the genetic testing in the tumors. We knew that this, these drugs were worth exploring in other types of BRAF mutations. So it's about thinking outside the box, and that's only one example of many where we do that. At MIA, you're currently leading a number of clinical trials which are yielding extraordinary hope for people who would previously have died. Can you talk us through just a couple of those? So I've chosen two trials that are what we call investigator-led trials. The first one is the Australian Brain Collaboration. What we're doing is we're looking at immunotherapies and their activity in melanoma in the brain. So it's a trial where we randomise patients to a doublet of two immune therapies versus one immune therapy. Immune therapies work on the immune system. They do not directly kill the melanoma cancer cell. They get the immune system to do the job for it. The second trial is what we call a neoadjuvant trial. Neoadjuvant is where we give a course of drug therapies before the patient goes on to have surgery to remove all the melanoma in their body. So they're two models that are very MIA, sent, uh, built by MIA. I think the neoadjuvant model where you collect the tissue after you've given a course of drugs is increasingly going to be used here at MIA to understand drugs uh, and how they work in humans quickly so that we can quickly find drugs that work and move them into bigger trials for patients with melanoma. And finally, I know you have no spare time, but what do you enjoy doing in your spare time? Um, that's a really good question. And I do try to do things that are outside of work, even though I've got very limited time. My father always said to me, I'm one of six children. He always said, you're the one who works hard and plays hard. 
So I actually uh, play basketball weekly. I'm part of a team, uh, which I enjoy very much. We're a, a funny gaggle in the team. It's great. We really get on well and um, I really enjoy that. I am very much into exercise. So I run, I swim and I cycle and occasionally do a bit of rowing, but not on, on a real lake or, or river. Um, and I spend time with my family, with my children and my husband. That's very, very, very important to me. So I try to make sure that the weekends really are devoted to them. But I must say, I do end up working quite a bit, but um, I, I put them as my priority and number one. So that's, that's what I do with my spare time at this point in time. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today.